Welcome back to another episode of Swamp Stories. For this episode, we head up the coast to the Pacific Northwest. We touch base in a new city that has never been covered. But before we get into the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Also, you can follow the Swamp Stories Instagram page where you can suggest new videos. Seattle, Washington. Definitely not a city I thought would ever be on Swamp Stories. Seattle doesn't have a dangerous reputation. When you think of Seattle, crime is probably the last thing that comes to mind. First, of course, would be Subarus, hiking, Starbucks drinkers, soccer moms, all that. But just like any other city, bad things happen in Seattle too. Look, I'm not going to pretend like it's the grimiest city in the world, because I'd be lying. In fact, Seattle has one of the top five lowest homicide rates in the country. Sitting at just three per 100,000 residents, that's 10 times lower than Oakland and 20 times lower than St. Louis. Numbers don't tell the whole story though. That's because all the crime occurs in a few specific neighborhoods. And these hoods are no different than any hood across America. The moral of the story is that the streets are the streets at the end of the day. And you'll see why South Seattle is nothing to play with. Let me introduce you to the two biggest rival hoods in South Seattle. First, let me introduce you to Holly Park, also known as 3900. Holly Park was originally a large public housing complex located off Martin Luther King Way. There were really no houses in this area. It was all run down government housing. The area had issues, especially when the guys who wear blue from LA moved up to Seattle and took over the neighborhood. By 1985, Holly Park was infested with crime and street activity. It gained a bad reputation. So bad that Seattle decided to tear it all down. Starting in the year 2000, Holly Park began its demolition and rebuilt into this. These nice looking brand new townhomes are not exactly what they seem. All of these are reserved for Section 8 residents. 1,400 units of Section 8 housing in one little neighborhood. With all of this new affordable housing, hundreds of Somalians and Ethiopians moved in, and they adjusted to the Holly Park lifestyle. One thing that they learned is that being from Holly Park comes with serious consequences. Many people aren't going to like you simply for the block you come from. Yes, it's that serious for Holly Park. They have rivals all over South Seattle and the Tukwila area. Don't believe me? This story here will change your perception of Seattle. It's crazy, but before we get into it, let me run the intro. Let me introduce you to a man named Samuel Razine, a Holly Park 3900 legend. But before he became a legend, he was living a wild life in South Seattle. Kids in the New Holly area say this is where everyone hangs out. It's also where word spread quickly that two 20 year old men from the neighborhood forced a girl to have with five strangers. People have been talking about it since, since it happened. Today, Yonatan Ogubi and Samuel Razine pleaded not guilty. He had multiple rivals, but none bigger than the Tucktown Kings. Tucktown is a nickname for a small city below Seattle called Tuckwilla. In this city, there's a group of guys off 144th Street that call themselves the Kings. Well, in 2011, Razine was set to make a transaction with the Tucktown Kings involving thousands of dollars. The Kings had something the opposite color of black and the opposite texture of water. And Razine? Well, he had a bunch of cash. There are two sides to this story. Let's start with the King's version. They say Razine didn't actually plan on purchasing anything. He wanted that five finger discount, so he kept the pack and never paid up. On the other hand, Razine claims that they were setting him up, so he had to run off. They claimed he used the situation as bait to get to him. I'm not going to say which side is telling the truth, but what happened next may be an indication. While Tucktown felt disrespected either way, and Razine pretty much said, come get it back in blood. So that's exactly what Tucktown would do. The Tucktown Kings were absolutely relentless. February 2nd, 2012. Samuel Razine is driving through Tucktown with his 19-year-old girlfriend, Nikeba McDonald. While he's driving his mom's Escalade through the Kings neighborhood, assuming that he won't be noticed. Well, that was wrong because a car pulls up beside him and bam. Nikeba was an aspiring actress. It's sad that Razine's actions may have cost her life. But then again, if she knew the type of life that he was living, then these are the kinds of things that can happen. 
Well, police would ask Razim questions and he would tell them that he didn't know who did it. Then he told them that he would go handle it himself, which I don't know why he would tell them that. Must be a rookie mistake because they would be on his bumper. He would lay low for a few months until he would return. That brings us to September 17th, 2013. Samuel Razine pulls up to his mom's house in the same Cadillac Escalade. Something seems off. He can sense someone pulling in behind him. So his instincts tell him to run. That's when he hears a pew go by his ear. He ducks and runs inside the home to take cover. He was untouched once again. Two days later, September 19th, 2013, Samuel Razine walks out of his mom's house. As soon as he steps outside, BAM! He jumps back inside and ducks, and then the car speeds away. That would be unsuccessful attempt number three. At this point, Samuel Razine is probably the luckiest man alive. You could call him Mr. Untouchable. Samuel decides that he needs to make a change to the game plan because this luck may not last forever. He stops driving his mom's car and goes out and buys a new one. It's time to lay low. Well, just a few months later, the rivals would figure out which new car he drives. Well, one day in 2014, he briefly leaves the car in a parking lot. And when he returns, his car is in flames and it burns down completely. Well, once again, it's time for a new car. So Samuel Razine buys himself a black BMW 7 Series with tinted windows, black rims, and a whole speaker system. May 15th, 2014. Samuel is driving in a suburb called Renton, which is south of Seattle. Well, one of Samuel's tires runs low, so he stops at a gas station. By this time, he has a new girlfriend, and he sends her into the store to get change for the air machine. So Samuel stays in the car. But that's when a man pulls up right beside him, and BAM! He would be rushed to the hospital, where it would take him three weeks to recover. At this point, only Thanos could take him down. It's safe to say that Samuel is made of Teflon. Police officers would ask him questions, but again, he would not say any details. Instead, he would get in the field and start blitzing like Aaron Donald. October 2nd, 2014. Samuel would pull up to a known hangout spot for the rivals. Bam! He would let 50 go. <laughs> Thankfully, no injuries were sustained. He was out there shooting like Ben Simmons at the free throw line. Well, he would get arrested for it, and Seattle police would offer him some serious time. That would be unless he was willing to give up some information. Okay guys, for this round of Final Jeopardy, I need everyone to guess. Did Samuel give up information to investigators? Yes, of course he did. And here's what he would give up. He would tell them that he and Holly Park were rivals with Tucktown. They would then ask him to point out the names and he would tell them everyone on the opposite side. He would tell them that the main rivals' names are Reuben Donaldson, Randy Donaldson, Samuel... I'm not gonna pretend I can say that. Or the next one. Or this one either. He would also tell them to watch a video by Tucktown Kings called They Don't Wanna Ride. They don't wanna ride, nah. I told you they don't wanna ride. Nah. I told you they don't wanna ride. Cause every day I'm outside. You know I keep a bang on my side. You know we hate the other side. I told you they don't wanna ride. He would explain to them that the lyrics indicate that they're responsible for the life of his girlfriend, Nikeba McDonald. He would also tell investigators the cars that Tucktown Kings used when they tried to get him. He gave them the make, model, year, and color of the cars. After all this barking, Samuel Razine would still end up getting eight years, which he is currently serving his last year before being released. Once again, why even join this life if you're not built for the consequences of it? I feel like I talk about this in every video, but either way I stand on it. Let's fast forward to a new era in South Seattle. Holly Park found themselves some rivals very close to home this time. In fact, just two minutes down the road lies Rainier Avenue and Cloverdale Street. This is a neighborhood called the South End. That's where a group called GGG originates. Grimy Gangsta Gorillas is what it stands for. Their block is on Rainier Ave, and that's where you may find them posted up, as long as it's not a rainy day, which is rare in Seattle, so you probably won't find them posted up. I am not going to lie to you. This is the nicest neighborhood I've ever seen called a hood. Two-story homes, front yards, clean streets. 
It makes no sense to me. This is a really nice neighborhood. Like I just couldn't imagine someone growing up in these houses and then being in the streets. It's giving Malibu's Most Wanted vibes. Very much Friday After Next vibes. But honestly, that's not for me to determine. So let's continue the story. Their main representative is a bubbling rapper named Tana Money. He blew up in Seattle after a few hit songs. One of those was filmed in Holly Park. Seattle police say that this decision by Tana Money caused him to be Holly Park's biggest rival. December 29th, 2019. Tana Money would go out to the club in his gray Dodge Challenger. The whole way, three men are behind him. These three are three Holly Park members, Pepe, Ali Sharif, and Aiden Muhammad. They would follow him all the way there. Then they would wait for him when he goes inside. Time passes and Tana Money leaves. He hops on the 509 freeway. That's when Pepe pulls right up beside him and BAM! Smell. Look at my smell. A young man with a cheesy grin who captured the hearts of hip hop fans. His music touched everyone. There was people from out of state that didn't even know my brother and hit him and said, I don't know who you are, but I've heard your song and it's, it's dope. Like my brother's music traveled and it touched a lot of souls, so. 20 year old James Richardson grew up in South Seattle in the Rainier Beach neighborhood. Music was his passion, but his heart was with his family. He used to always wake me up when he come home. Just to say, Mom, Mom, I love you. I'm home. And I would say, Thank you, son, for waking me up to let me know you're home so I can sleep in peace, knowing my baby's home. His uncle Tim McGee says James was very much loved and leaves behind this little guy, his two year old son. His music came from, came from a place that came from his heart. You know, he rapped about his son. He rapped about his relationships, he rapped about his struggles. This was the scene from Sunday night. Washington State Patrol shut down Route 509 in both directions just after 8.30. Troopers say when they got to the scene, it was clear the driver of the crashed vehicle had been in the face. Detectives are investigating and searching for the and Crime Stoppers is offering a $1,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest. But I got this call. That they took my baby, and I was, won't hear him shaking. He said, Mom, "Mama, home. I can't hear that no more. I'm sleeping in this room. That's the closest thing I can get to my, to my son. Just laying in his bed, wishing he would come home." Seattle residents say that Tana Money was the next rapper to blow from Seattle, and his passing devastated the city to say the least. Yeah, I'm fine. Where I'm at, somewhere he ain't stay with one. Roof Chris, first time. Should I snuck in my night? Nigga looking at me funny, shorty sure better bust a rhyme. All that looking at a nigga gon' make yourself blind. Sipping slow on this shit they call medicine. But I don't know, I still feel the pain through my sins. From South Pendo to the club, you we get it in. Pepe, Ali Sharif, and Aiden Muhammad would all go down for it. This event turned Holly Park and GGG up to a whole new level. They became nothing to play with, seriously. Numerous losses have taken place on both sides since the passing of Tana Money. What do you guys think of Seattle? Can you take them seriously in the streets or is it ridiculous to be living like that in such a safe city? Did their environment make them or are they making their environment? That's going to wrap up this episode of Swamp Stories. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also follow the Instagram page. Thanks for watching. Peace.